think one of the most rewarding feelings as a photographer is getting the opportunity to see your work in person in real life, printed on a piece of paper, on metal, on canvas, on acrylic, whatever it may be, such a rewarding experience as a photographer. Hey everybody, my name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a landscape photographer based here in Southern Utah. In today's video, I wanted to tell you guys everything that I know about printing my photography. It's what has worked for me. I've sold a lot of really large prints. I do a weekly market where I sell prints and I've just done a ton of printing and I've been able to nail some of the best practices in order to create high quality prints. Now, if you're here, maybe you have never printed before and you want to get great results on your first prints or maybe you've printed it before and your photos haven't turned out well. Uh, either way, I am here to help you. There's a lot of mistakes that people make when they're sending photos off to the printer that result in images that just aren't good, whether they are blurry and not sharp or the colors aren't right or whatever it may be. So I am going to combine everything into this ultimate guide here to help you guys to create the best quality prints possible. Now I'll do my best to section this video off so you can come back here and rewatch this before every time you make a print so that you can continue to get great results from your printing. Let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing that you need to understand about printers is that they use something called DPI or dots per inch or PPI or pixels per inch. It's the same thing. Without getting too incredibly technical about what this means, this is essentially like the resolution of your print. A printer that uses 150 DPI or dots per inch is going to produce a much better looking print than a printer that prints at 75 dpi or dots per inch. This is essentially how many dots of color are going down per inch on your print. Now some mediums of print are known to be able to handle higher DPI's. So for example, a lot of places that I've seen that print metal prints are printing at 150 or even 200 DPI. Whereas other places I've seen that print canvas prints that are still very high quality, but just because of the nature of the canvas, they're only printing 80, 90 or 100 DPI. So in a metal print, you're gonna get a little bit more clarity and detail there. So do keep that in mind based on the kind of print that you're making. The best way to figure out how many DPI or PPI your printer uh, or the company you're gonna print at is gonna use is to go on their website, look at the frequently asked questions or their file specifications, and you should be able to find it here. If not, give them a call or shoot them an email and ask how many DPI or PPI your file should be prepared with. I'm gonna tell you guys why this is important. So as I look at my image here in Lightroom, you can actually see how many pixels your image is. Go to the library module and then simply select a photo. On the top left, it should show the amount of pixels your image is. Now, if it doesn't, you're gonna go up to view and you're going to go down to view options and you're gonna make sure that one of these three shows cropped dimensions. That will show you the dimensions of your photo. Now, the reason why this relates to DPI is because I can divide these two numbers by the DPI that my printer is going to accept in order to figure out how large this image can be without having to upsize. Just doing the fast math on this photo, I could get roughly a 40 by 60 print without resizing. Now that's really good, but I'm shooting with a Sony a7R 4 which is a 60 megapixel beast. A lot of you guys probably aren't shooting with a Sony a7R 4 and even for myself, I've got some older photos taken on a camera with less megapixels that I would need to upsize. For example, some photos that were shot on my Canon 6D a long time ago, I could only print at a 16 by 24 size without upsizing. If you need to upsize, to get the larger photo. Don't worry, we're gonna cover that a little bit later in this video, but this is just showing how you can calculate how large your photo needs to be, or rather, how large your print can be based on the photo that you have. So now before we jump into the resizing aspect of this video, I just wanna to mention to you guys that you should always do a test print before you do a full size print. What a test print is, is it's usually like a little four by four or four by six or whatever it is, basically just a small print of your photo. The reason why this is really important is because it's going to help you to nail the brightness as well as the colors in your photo because looking at things on a backlit screen is a lot different than looking at things on a piece of metal or a piece of paper or a piece of canvas and you don't know how their printer is set up. You don't know how your monitor is calibrated correctly or not. And even if your monitor is calibrated correctly, you can't guarantee that your print shop's printer is going to be calibrated correctly. So do a couple little four by four prints, send the photo over as you think you should get it printed. When you get it back, you might notice that your photo is too dark or it's too light or it's just right. Uh, and any of those you could correct, or you may notice that there's like a tint to your photo. So sometimes you'll have like a magenta or a green tint. All you're going to do is when you send a photo out to that printer is you will counteract 
correct that by adding a little bit of the opposite. So if it's green tinted, you'll add a little magenta. If it's magenta tinted, you'll add a little green. Same thing with it being too warm or cool. You ultimately just want to try and recreate the image that you see on your screen as best as you can. So always make sure you do a test print before you spend a lot of money on buying a really, really large print. Okay, so I wanna show you guys how to resize your print. I'm gonna be using a software that is developed by On One called On One Resize AI. At the time I'm making this video is Resize AI 2023, but there might be a newer version by the time that you're viewing it. I'm gonna show you guys why I really like the software for resizing my prints. So let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom here. You can see we've still got the same image. Now, the first thing that we wanna do is export this as a TIFF so that we can load it into Resize, or we could simply open this straight from Lightroom into Resize. Now, Yes, you could just launch straight from Lightroom into Resize, but I wanna show you guys how to export from Lightroom and then import it into Resize because I know a lot of you guys might not be using Lightroom. Maybe you're using a different editing software and you can still use Resize with any other editing software. So you're gonna first export this photo. I'm gonna to go to File and I'm gonna go down to Export and then I'm gonna have this box open up here. Now I'm gonna scroll down my export location. I just like to export it to the desktop because I'm gonna do something with it immediately and then just get rid of it. So having it at the desktop is the easiest place for me to be able to quickly grab it. I'm gonna go down, uh, I don't need to do any file naming. I'm not gonna do anything under video. Now under file settings, you need to make sure the image format is set to TIFF and these are the other settings I like with uh, the 16 bits per component, no compression, Adobe RGB 1998. Uh, then we're going to go down, make sure that nothing is checked here within image sizing. You don't want any box checked here. Same thing with output sharpening, nothing checked. With metadata, copyright only is fine. Uh, no watermarking for me on my prints. That's totally up to you though. And then post-processing, I want to do nothing. So you can go ahead and hit export. Then the image is going to go right over to your desktop. So then you're gonna go ahead and launch On One Resize AI 2023. If you wanna purchase this software, I've got a link down below. More on that later. Let's jump into how the software works. I'm going to select Open Photos here, and I'm going to go to Desktop, and I'm going to find my photo, which is right here, the TIFF. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Open, and that is going to load out for us really nicely. Here, it's gonna take just a second because the file is really large, um, but it's going to load out. Now you can see when you open this up, you've got options to use their presets. I like to avoid using those. I like to just do it myself for the most part. Um, and you'll see a lot of options over here. The first thing that you wanna do is go in where it has common sizes here. You're gonna make sure that it's on inches and not pixels because when we're working with a print, we wanna work with inches. Now, if you guys are not in the United States and you're like pretty much anywhere else in the world, you can use centimeters. Uh, but for those of us in the US of A, we're gonna go with inches. And then we're going to adjust the size. Now this works for either upsizing or downsizing. Let's say for this photo, I'm gonna make a 16 by 24. Now, like I said, I could easily upsize this as well, but I wanna downsize it because it'll make my file run a little bit faster so we don't have any lag in this video. So I'm gonna go with a width of 24 and it will automatically choose the height to go to 16. We can also select the resolution. I'm gonna do 150 pixels per inch because let's say I wanted to print this on metal. My metal shop, I think we'll do 150 pixels an inch. So I'm going to go with that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit 100, which is going to load the image as if it was actually a 16 by 24. This is really important and it's kind of difficult to understand. When you click 100, it will load the image in the background at 100%. So if my width was 60 and my height was 40, it would be a lot bigger. We'd be a lot more zoomed in. And on the other hand, if let's say my photo size was going to be the same size as my computer monitor, when I hit 100, it would perfectly fill the size of my monitor and not zoom in. I want it to be at 100 because when I'm sharpening for print here, I want to look at it as if I'm looking at it at real size. I don't want to zoom way in because the print is not going to look like that because I'm not zoomed in. So you always want to choose 100. You can see, I'll just show you an example here to help this make more sense. If I change it to 36 on the width and 24 on the height, I'm still at 100, but it's going to zoom in a little bit more because now we're creating a larger print. So that's how that works. 
Don't worry about these settings up here. Uh, once these are all nailed in, we can go ahead and go down. We're going to go into sharpening. So we wanna sharpen this photo for print as well. If this is all you do, you're honestly gonna come out with a really great print if you just export it from here. But to take things over the top, we're gonna to use sharpening. It's gonna make things look really nice. So I'm gonna check the box for sharpening. You'll notice it looks terrible right off the rip here. But what we're gonna do is we're going to click the print preset. That's gonna change it to a progressive sharpen. Don't worry about what these three mean. It's not important. I like using progressive for sharpening my prints. Now if I toggle this, you'll see that we have increased the sharpness a little bit. If you guys aren't watching this video in 4K, you might not be able to see it, but I promise you guys we are increasing the sharpness just a little bit. Now we have a bunch of different options here in terms of what we can do. First thing I like to do is bring the threshold up a little bit. That essentially changes the threshold for what's being sharpened. With the threshold at zero, pretty much everything in your image is gonna be sharpened evenly. When we bring up that threshold, it's not going to sharpen some of the things that aren't on the edges, which is good. Usually I find a threshold right about 25, 15 to 25 is good. You can toggle this. And if you want to turn the amount all the way up when you're adjusting the threshold, that's one way you can do it in order to be able to tell what the threshold is doing a little bit better. But I usually just stick with 15 to 25 on the threshold. Now we can adjust the detail. I'm going to bring the amount all the way up just so I can see what the detail slider does. You can see that it just makes it more or less detailed. I usually like this detail slider right about 45 to 50 range. And then I'll adjust the amount from there, just like that. Now you can see that it's not doing a lot of sharpening, but that's good. Um, if you're really over sharpening your image, there's either two problems. It's being over sharpened here for print and or you didn't sharpen it correctly when you finished editing your file. So I'm totally fine with that. Keep in mind what I'm looking at now is exactly what I should be looking at on my print. So when I toggle this eyeball, it's gonna spit out the perfect photo. Now, like I said, I'm at 100, uh, so I'm looking at the photo as the correct size, but the other thing to think about is that we are going to be viewing this photo here uh, on the wall. So I'm not gonna be this close to the wall, especially for a 24 by 36. So what I like to do is actually go all the way back. I like to back way up as much as I can here. And you probably can't see me right now, but I'm far back from my screen. And I just want to look at how the photo looks from afar. Now, the reason being because, like I said, I'm gonna be far back when I'm looking at the photo, so I wanna make sure that it looks good. You can, of course, scroll around and make sure things look good. And if you're running into any issues with the highlights or shadows or even skin being over sharpened, you can slide these boxes. Essentially, what the Protect does is if I slide this, it will make it so that the shadows are not being sharpened, so that the highlights are not being sharpened. And this is good in instances where maybe your brightest highlight like the sun or even the snow here are being over sharpened so you can slide that box don't do anything with the film grain unless you want a grainy photo but for most of us landscape people we don't uh, you can adjust the tiling if you want but like i said wouldn't recommend the tiling is a feature that you're going to use if you're printing your own photos but for most of you guys watching this video you're probably not printing your own photos and same thing with gallery wrap that's for like a canvas print as well so don't do anything with that once you're done you're satisfied here you're going to go ahead and hit export and then the on one export box is gonna come up. So now you have a few options here. Uh, you can put it in a subfolder. I like um, just putting it in like a Prince final folder right on my desktop. And then you're gonna go down. The only other thing you need to adjust here, you don't need to adjust resize because it's already being controlled by resize AI. The only thing you can control here is JPEG versus TIFF. Uh, now, if you're gonna do JPEG, make sure quality is 100. If you're gonna do TIFF, make sure it's at 16-bit depth, Adobe RGB 98, and quality as none. Now, if you've been around photography long, you've probably heard 55,000 different opinions on whether you should print in JPEG or in TIFF. Now, here's my recommendation to you. I've tested it a lot and I've found that it works well. So the reason why a lot of people don't recommend a JPEG is because when you submit a JPEG file to your printer, if the print shop, the person, the receptionist or whoever works at the print shop opens your file uh, and they make some changes and they save it, every time you save a JPEG, it reduces the quality. It compresses that file. We don't want our print files compressed at all. Uh, however, a TIFF allows you to keep pulling up the same high quality back to back to back over and over and over and over again. Now, the problem with TIFF is the file size is a lot larger. A lot of print shops don't accept these large TIFF files, so you may have to do a JPEG. 
Um, if you can, if your TIFF is going to be small enough, export a TIFF file. You don't have to worry about it. If not, JPEG should work perfectly fine as long as you make sure that the print shop is not doing any modifications on your photo. On that note, one thing you'll notice on a lot of print shops is they'll charge you like an additional 10 or $15 when you get your print. If you want them to like retouch or enhance your image, don't do that. All they're doing is exactly what we're doing right now. So I'm saving you guys a little bit of money here by doing it yourself and you don't need them opening your file because you're going to make sure that everything is just right and the print shop might touch it up for some color stuff and other things like that but hopefully you'll do some test prints and you'll be able to touch all that up yourself so with that being said you decide tiff or jpeg i usually do jpeg um, but sometimes i do tiff and all my prints turn out perfect and like i said if you're not opening the file again and you're strictly sending it straight to the printer and they're going to send the file straight to their printer then jpeg works perfectly fine once you're happy with that, go ahead and hit export. Your photo will export and you will be good to go upload that final file straight to your printer. So hopefully that helps you guys. I know that it's a lot to think about when you're printing, but I've seen so many poorly done prints that don't look good. They're not sharp. People might not buy them. Honestly, people might still buy them if they're not sharp, if they like the photo enough, but people will be amazed when your photos are looking sharp and they're looking so much better than all the other photographers around you that are printing their stuff. Make sure you save this video so you can rewatch it so you guys can continue to get high quality prints over and over and over again. I highly recommend the On One Resize AI software. Uh, I think it's great. This video is not sponsored at all by On One. They don't even know I'm making this. However, I did include an affiliate link down below which if you guys are going to pick up this on one resize software, I would appreciate if you use the link. It gets me a really small kicker. Um, and I just really appreciate that. If you thought this video was helpful and you're going to pick up the software. So there you guys have it. Now, you know, everything you need to know about printing in order to create some really, really nice prints. I'm really excited that you guys will be on the road to great prints. If you guys have any questions, comments, or if you want to show me some prints that you made down in the comments, I don't even know if you can leave a photo in the comments, but if you can leave me a photo with your prints, I'd love to see them. Thank you guys so much for checking out this weekend's video. As always, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me to continue to grow my channel and offer these free videos to you every week, helping you guys become a better photographer. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.